as a procurement professional thinking of uh, making money in any other way other than the salary you're earning. Assuming you have a salary. If you don't have a salary, then again, same thing, right? Just thinking about how can I make extra money or in fact, how can I just make money? So let's talk about 10 things that you can do or 10 ways that you can pick from when it comes to generating income. And you're ranking them from areas that cost almost nothing to those that demand some level of investment. But uh, the first thing that I want you to do, okay, as a favor here, um, every week I put out newsletters, every week I send out emails, okay, where my newsletter, that are like every Monday, for example, every Monday there is the Money Monday where we talk about skills that can help you either boost your economic reality or just help improve on business. And uh, the other things also, depending on um, the sort of emails that you prefer. So if you like that, if you like receiving newsletters, summary guides, uh, downloads, links to videos, online to my online courses, all that stuff, right? That are designed to help you improve on, you know, improve yourself. So make sure you sign up uh, to my newsletter. I've linked it below. So let's talk about ways in which you can make money in procurement. And the first one is content and media. Okay, that's just a no-brainer. I mean, that, that, that's definitely the first place that you can think of starting. I mean, you're watching this one, okay? Uh, YouTube or whichever platform you're watching it from. This is just content and that's media. So if you turn it into a business, which is, it actually is, see, that's a media business. And in this case, uh, it just comes down to what are you selling? How do people know that you exist? And how do you finance the whole thing? Content creation will just depend on those three things, right? I mean, just like any other business, it will depend on what exactly you're planning to sell. How do people know that you exist? So in short, there is the operations, there is the finance, okay? There is the marketing. So those things are important. And the content can be the product. The content can help with marketing as well as, you know, depending on how you monetize it, the content itself can finance itself. So in case you're thinking, well, I don't have anything to sell. You can make proper content that fits in all those three criteria. For example, think about this, right? If you watch this on YouTube, and uh, let's say you don't skip any of those ads, so that's a way that I'll monetize this video, assuming you don't buy any of my product. Of course, if you skip the ad, then there is that. But uh, in that case, see, it's content, okay? It's promoting itself, it's financing itself, and it's making you aware that, okay, this guy exists and is doing a video on this stuff. So that's the first thing that you can think of. This category, you can start YouTube channel, okay? Then you're thinking, what if I don't have a camera? Yeah, well, see, the thing is, you don't need a camera. When I started doing this, I didn't have a camera. What I did was record an audio, animate it with PowerPoint presentation, save it as a video, and then it becomes a video. Uh, you're thinking, well, what if I can afford a camera, but I don't want to talk? Then you don't have to do video. I mean, we've said YouTube. YouTube is just one of them. There are also things like, you know, blog posts, which you can start and are monetized through ads, sponsorship, affiliate marketing. You can start a podcast. You can start a newsletter, okay? That is something that you can also start. The question is just how do you plan to monetize it? But the option is there. So no excuses. So if you're thinking about media, there is that. It's just something important. If you're thinking, well, I'm just going to be a content creator. I also want you to remember that people pay for value. Because being popular, having a video that has a lot of views, that doesn't necessarily equate to income. Think of it this way, as a procurement student. I want you to understand something. There is something called competitive advantage, which you're probably aware of, right? Having a competitive advantage is not the same as market leadership. Well, let me put it this way. Market leadership, okay, doesn't necessarily equate to competitive advantage. You know those videos, like, you know, somebody makes a video and they are like, you know, semi-nude or something, all right? So, uh, short skirt and you're busy throwing kicks because, I don't know, it's a culture thing. And then, um, yeah, you get like a million views. Those people are watching that video. Why do you think they're watching it? Do you think they're watching it to see how high you can throw your kicks if you're a lady? And if you're a man, you know, there with your biceps and all that stuff. The question is, what exactly are you selling? How do you plan to make money with that video? So that's the first thing you need to ask yourself. Or when it comes to content, 
as a business that is. I mean, if you're just doing it because you want to be famous, all the best. So ask yourself, what product am I selling here? And who's watching these that is likely to buy that product? Because if, you know, like ladies, for example, okay, I'm talking about ladies because I really know. So if a lady puts out a video and they're dressed in a way that is suggestive, the men are watching that. Do you really think they're watching it because they want to buy whatever clothes you're wearing? So that's something you need to ask yourself, okay? And figure the answer to that. So anyway, content, all right, can be a business. Number two, freelancing. If you're thinking, well, I really don't want to create content. I'm too old for that. That's not true because uh, there are a lot of old people who are actually making a lot of money through content creation. Nowadays, like every other entrepreneur has an online presence, right? And they're doing content and all that stuff. But anyway, if you don't want to do that, freelancing is another way to go about it. First of all, platforms like Fiverr.com, okay? Uh, which allows you to offer your services, okay? So you can start with those ones. You can also create accounts on things like Upwork and all that. So you can freelance. The, the idea is if you're good at something, you're trying to find somebody who's going to pay you to do something for them. And I'm not talking about scenarios because I, I, I receive this a lot where somebody sends a message saying, are you interested in talking about how you can sell more courses? Like, and then if I say, okay, yes, I am. And they say, if you give us money, we are going to help you get a lot of reviews. I'm like, why don't you just do that and then say, look, I did this and it worked. Okay. So now that I've done it for you, I've shown you that it can work. Give me money. So th the thing is, Always show proof of concept before you ask somebody to give you money so that they can. I mean, I'm not giving you my money so that you can tell, you, you can test it. I'm not, like, it doesn't work that way. Okay, when it comes to freelancing, like in most of these cases, people have been conned. And so, once beaten, twice, whatever. Things like, in this case, areas that you can think of. So, you can offer freelance services to businesses that need short-term procurement expertise. So things like delivery and logistics, okay? Provide outsourcing services to manage procurement for small businesses. These are areas you can think of. Uh, help business manage the bidding and tender process for large projects. Offer contract drafting and management services for procurement teams. Conduct supplier audits to ensure compliance with contractual and quality requirements. So the point is that you're just showing a company that, look, I can do this thing for you. Or you can just hire somebody to do it for you in-house. But if I do it for you, you're going to cut on costs. Because first of all, you're not going to be paying my social services and all those things, right? And uh, if you help, or if you show a company how they can cut on their costs and increase their profit, then definitely they'll want to work with you. So freelancing, that's another thing. So what did you say? You can create content. Basically, have a media business. It's not just creative content. Having a media business. You can freelance. That's another way you can make money. But then it just depends on the skills you have. Okay? Like logistics. Somebody needs somebody to deliver things for them or, you know, all that stuff. You can think about those ones. Number three, we have networking and building communities. Look, you know the way you go to Facebook, okay? And you see somebody has a group that has like 10,000, 20,000 people following it yeah so what do you do with that group or even a page you know, sometimes just a page like uh i mean I, i'm 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 a fan of formula one okay and other shows and so there are those pages i follow which are kind of interesting because they post nice memes well not nice memes more like funny memes that's it so how do those people make money well they can monetize the community so that's something that you can think of you can start doing that i'm not saying you can create a page the page is just an example the idea here is networking and building communities so in this case you can organize paid networking events or conferences for procurement professionals you can host okay events that recognize excellence in procurement and make money through entrance fees and sponsorship you can create and manage paid online community okay for procurement professionals as long as you create value for them, that's the key thing. So don't just be like, here's a group, okay? And then the question becomes, what, what do people do in that group? Uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Like, I remember having creating um, a WhatsApp group for procurement students. In this case, it was level, I think, level four or something, diploma in that. And the idea was simple. The idea was I'll just post content there. And if anybody has the materials, they can share questions and all that. 
But then what ends up happening is you just end up having people showing up there who don't add value. The only thing they do is they start promoting weird things like click this link and then you'll win Bitcoin or something. So you have to be careful. If it is a business, you have to run it as a business. Get rid of the jokers and keep people who are adding value. Okay? So if it is somebody creating content and then they are sharing content in your group, that's value. Okay? So you can have that. And then then later you can say, okay, we have this event. Or you know, whatever. The point is, you can even have companies who are promoting products. You're working with those companies and you're telling your members, look, there's this company that is selling these procurement books and this is how much it's costing. So anybody who wants to buy, you can buy through here. And then you probably get an affiliate commission. So the point is you can use those communities to generate income as long as first you add value. Because if there is no value, people are just going to leave because it, it just becomes a place for spammy content. And the same goes with conferences and workshops and things of that nature. Number next, number four, another fourth area that you can use or that, that you can make money from is training and education. And uh, that is not complicated, right? Now notice, we started from things that don't cost you money. We just, as we move on, it's becoming slightly uh, involving, right? So with training and education, you're talking about things like develop and sell courses and procurement, best practices, corporate workshops and training procurement teams. Okay, you can do those ones. Conduct paid webinars. Okay, Zoom is something you can use on various procurement topics. Offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring to new procurement professionals. And I'm not talking about those things where somebody just posts like a clip saying, if you want to learn about CIPS or procurement or whatever it is, talk to me. It's like, come on, all right? It's business. You can do better than that. So the point is, you can pick any of those ones. Number five, product and service development. This is going to be, well, it depends. I mean, think of something like LinkedIn. It's a network, right? That's it. People go there to look for jobs to network with other people. But since it's free to join, I mean, you can, you can have a paid, like paid, what, what is it called? A paid prof, whatever. But since it's free to join, then there's also LinkedIn learning where they sell online courses. Right, so, so there's the service which is free, the freemium, and then there's the premium package. Okay, so developing products, developing services just depends on how you look at it. But in this case, what are you talking about? You're talking about things like you can offer things like procurement marketplace, basically create a marketplace connecting suppliers and buyers. Again, remember, it just comes down to value. And in this case, what are you helping procurement professionals with? Well, for starters, at the core of procurement, it's all about getting things at the right price, okay, uh, in the right quantity, in the right quality, delivered to the right place at the right time. There are those five rights, right, and, and, and other things. So show them that you can do that for them. Your services should be showing those ones. In addition to all that, you can also offer market research services tailored to procurement needs, okay. You can provide services to audit certain suppliers on sustainability practices for the company you can set up a business that offers outsourced procurement services i mean think about it when you see these epz's okay what do you think they're doing like a company set up there and then they are making jeans or whatever product that are going to be sold in another country and then you are there saying yeah well we have the economy it's like whatever product is being created there's not even being used in your country right so some foreigners showed up in your country, they paid some politician, now they've set up that one there to do exactly what you guys could have done. So why don't you become that foreigner who tells another company, look, I can have this thing created in this country for you people at a cheaper price. Just outsource that to us. Now, the question obviously is going to be, how credible are you? So you can work on that. My job is to give you ideas, okay? <laughs> if you want issues to do with credibility, we'll talk about those ones later. But at this point, it's just ideas, okay? So just a quick recap before you look at the remaining. So what have we talked about here? We are saying you want to start, you want to make extra money in procurement. So you can do that through things like content and media business or creation, freelancing, networking, and building communities, training and education, okay? Product and service development. And I also want you to remember that uh, this, information like this, 
are the sort of things that you get if you're part of my subscribers to my newsletter, okay? If you sign up to my newsletter, these are things that you get every week, just sending out tips, okay? Helping you to generate more income or even helping you to pass your exams or even help. I mean, the point is it's just packed with value. So make sure you sign up. Link is provided. Now, number next, what else can you do? Number six, consulting and advisory. And uh, in this case, we're talking about doing things like providing strategic sourcing advice to companies for reducing costs and improving supplier relationships. Okay. Advice on the best procurement technology solutions like ERPs. You can offer services to identify and mitigate procurement related risks. So managing supply chain risk is something that uh, is it's a big deal, right? And so if you can help companies know how they can deal with so those sort of things as a consultant or as an advisor, that's a good idea. You can also provide expertise on managing specific uh, categories of spend to achieve better value. The point here is that um, <clears throat> you just help companies by figuring out a solution behind problems they have. And, you know, again, look, you need to first of all build your brand, which just points to the reason why you still need to have that social media presence or some form of marketing or some way in which the company can see you as an authority in that field. But there is something you can do. Number seven, technology and tools. And uh, well, as the name suggests, in this case, you're dealing with technology that is going to be procurement related or supply chain related or something along those nature. Or again, look, procurement is going to be in every business, right? So even the people who are buying like, um, what are they called? QuickBooks, those accounting softwares. Well, it's still being procured. So how do they know that they've bought the right one? Anyway, in this case, we're talking about things like developing specialized software tools to aid in procurement process like CRMs, okay? Inventory management softwares. Number two, offer data analysis to optimize procurement strategies, create mobile app that assist in procurement functions, you can develop AI tools that predict trends and optimize procurement decisions. And if you're thinking, look, I'm a procurement student in supply chain. I'm not a programmer. Yeah, well, there is something called partnership and collaboration, right? There is also somebody saying, I'm a programmer. I don't understand business intelligence or something like those. Are. Okay. So when you take that guy who's good at programming and uh, you tell them, this is what I want you to do, and you combine and you create a business, see that's how it goes man it's not like if you have to be the guy creating the thing that you're selling come on anyway so think about that one because nowadays everybody's like ai ai and usually it's just some chatbot but they just give it a name and then add ai the point is technology is there okay anyway next number eight industry specific opportunities and uh in this case you're just targeting specific problems in given industry in fact that's how billionaires do it anyway they just pick an industry, and then go big. It's like Elon Musk and Starlink, okay? Like, it's, it's everywhere, man. I mean, when was it? Last week, the thing was in, I think I read it was in Zimbabwe or something. So it's already there, okay? And uh, the week before that, they had some issues with X in Brazil. The point is, picking an industry and going after it, that's something you can do. So in this case, uh, you can offer problems like healthcare procurement specialists, you can offer problems. You can offer solutions, right? The solutions like um, in healthcare, you can become a specialist in, like if that is what you are, right? So in healthcare, what procurement problems can you solve there? Um, you can offer construction procurement services, uh, public sector procurement, like, you know, where you offer services to help businesses navigate government procurement process because most people have no idea. They're like, I want a tender. Yeah, to do it. That's what most, most of the youth say. If this guy becomes a representative, then he's going to help us with tenders. Tenders to do what? And they're like, tender to supply anything. Like, yeah, okay. So how do you supply anything? So you can, you can help them by, you know, those problems with their businesses. Uh, you can also, like, defense procurement consulting. And if you're thinking, hang on, I'm not in the military. Look, we've already pointed that one out. You don't have to be. You just have to find someone who is. Okay? And then find another person who can probably uh, finance the entire thing right so again as you continue remember if you have any question make sure you ask be it through the comment section or through 
social media that is at Zerite Network, be it on Facebook, X, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all those places, right? Now let's move on to the next one. So number nine, we have innovation and niche market. And again, as I said, as you go, is it up or down the list? Things become a bit expensive, but <clears throat> it depends. So in this case, what are you talking about? You're talking about things like helping, okay, with ethical sourcing. So becoming ethical sourcing advisor, where you guide companies in implementing ethical sourcing strategies, developing and implementing blockchain solutions for transparency in procurement, offering services to help businesses adopt green procurement. I mean, look, the, the whole idea, I mean, we have those ESGs, right? But uh, the whole idea of going green is, is a big deal. I mean, even, like I said, uh, fan of Formula One, right? And, um, when watching something like Formula One, they're talking about we are going to go electric. Why? Because, you know, emission and all that kind of makes you think, is engine really the problem or the fuel is the problem? Why don't you fix the fuel? Okay. Plus, if, it, if Formula One becomes electric, now I'm just ranting. Then suddenly it becomes Formula E. So who, who even watches Formula E? Anyway, so those are the problems that um, companies have and uh, figure out how to, to help them solve those ones without destroying the products they already have in the name of eco-friendly solutions. So uh, that's a thing. That's a business idea. Okay. I mean, hydrogen. You know, the problem with hydrogen as a source of fuel is how are you going to store it? Because I think it evaporates or something. So that's an idea. Of course, those ones are very going, those are going to be very, very capital intensive. But the point is, you can come up with something, you know, innovation based on TV trending and just look at it in terms of how does this thing fit in procurement or supply chain. And finally, number 10, investment and partnership. That's just simple. Okay. It's, it's just the way it sounds. Okay. You want to make money, then invest in, you can, you can also invest in uh, businesses, in other people's businesses, okay, procurement businesses, startups, and all that, and then you can still make money. Of course, that means you already had money to do that. So in this case, invest in or partner with startups focused on procurement innovations. Look, those are 10 things you can choose from, right? And uh, every Monday, we do put out, okay, or they do send out email summaries talking about some of the things that you can learn some of the things that you can do to improve on your economic reality. That is in addition to other emails that are just based on like education and stuff like that. They're, they're, they're PDFs, their videos, they're all that stuff. So make sure you join the newsletter and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Now, in the meantime, if there is any question, do let me know. See you in the next video.